Welcome back to the PSI YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Ali, the head transformation specialist at the Peptide Science Institute, and let's get into it. Today, early morning, I was in the hospital, and a friend of mine, a cardiologist specifically, was asking me about growth hormone in the uh, context of treating heart failure specifically. Now, he wanted my opinion on it, and I definitely gave it to him, but I thought, I mean, <laughs> damn, if this guy's a cardiologist and he doesn't know it, it's better to make a whole video about it and spread it online, right? So, growth hormone in the context of treating heart failure is actually a great idea, one of my favorites, and I use it a lot. But it is also important to know that heart failure patients can be growth hormone resistant, okay? So in patients with heart failure who also suffered from cachexia, there was definitely signs of growth hormone resistance because these patients had a reduced level of serum growth hormone binding protein, which can be a proxy for reduced uh, growth hormone receptor expression in tissues, right? But it also showed that so the IGF-1 to growth hormone ratio was also reduced in these patients. Is that as significant? I don't think so because, um, you know, the liver is what mostly synthesizes IGF-1 uh, in response to a stimulus from growth hormone. So, I mean, these patients, they could have hepatomegaly due to blood congestion and the liver could be functioning improperly. They could have uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and their liver could be functioning improperly, etc. So it's not the best proxy, but GH bonding protein is actually a pretty good and really fancy one. You don't see it often. Anyway, that was shown with around two units of growth hormone before bed. And compared to the control group, they had growth hormone resistant, these uh, heart failure patients. What does that mean? So in heart failure, these patients usually have an upregulation of uh, sympathetic nervous activity. That's the uh, fight or flight nervous system. So in short, they had excessive adrenergic activity and uh, a lot of catecholamines as well play a role, not just adrenaline, but whatever. The thing is, these patients do not just get treated with drugs that reduce sympathetic nervous activity like beta blockers which uh, block adrenaline receptors and, uh, you know, don't allow adrenaline to activate those beta receptors usually. But they are also treated with drugs like SGLT2 inhibitors, which uh, reduce sympathetic uh, innervation through a different vector. Now, growth hormone itself also reduces sympathetic innervation and adults with uh, hypopituitary function and uh, untreated growth hormone deficiency have actually been shown to have a uh, more aggressive sympathetic nervous response. Whereas GH being a uh, peptide hormone and drug that can lower sympathetic nervous activity does make it useful, especially due to the upregulation of GABAergic activity and so on, which these patients do need a lot. Um, thing is, the dose has to be ideal for that patient. So 2IUs was shown to, you know, the patients were shown to exhibit resistance to 2IU. That doesn't just mean let's blast them with 4IUs or 5IUs or 10IUs because that could kill them eventually and very quick. Why? Not due to cancer like some people would think, but mostly due to water retention, okay? Heart failure patients, we do give them aggressive diuretics like torsamide and furosemide, etc., why? Because they are more likely to hang on to excessive amounts of fluid than you and I. And that hanging on to fluid puts their lungs at risk where, uh, you know, pulmonary edema is the biggest fear when it comes to heart failure, especially left-sided heart failure. You know, more, it's a lot more common than in right-sided heart failure acutely, okay? And thing is with pulmonary edema, it can be caused by the growth hormone due to a lot of acute water retention. Not all people will hold on to water the same in response to growth hormone therapy, but a lot of people do. I know people who can inject 10 IUs a day and have zero issues with water retention. But me personally, even three IUs makes me hang on to water a lot more, okay? So, but does that matter in a patient with heart failure who's already on diuretics probably? Maybe. The patient needs to be treated uh, individually. The dose needs to be individualized. However, it should always be kept in mind that growth hormone resistance is something that's pretty common amongst heart failure patients. 
all right? Basically, with GH therapy, what you want to look for in terms of uh, markers of responsiveness in the patient is uh, anxiety, is that reduced? Energy, is that increased? Breathing, has that improved? Heart rate, has that lowered? Etc. Things like that, they should be followed uh, quite religiously in a patient uh, with heart failure being treated with growth hormone due to the dangers of it and to also make sure that the patient himself is, you know, he knows how to use the pen or uh, the vials or whatever he's giving. All right. Amongst all the peptide hormones, growth hormone might be the most interesting one due to its broad range of effects, metabolites, and uh, really the gene expression that it does stimulate. But it is also probably one of the most dangerous peptides to mess with at all. Is it very useful in the context of heart failure? Absolutely yes. Fuck yes. It is amazing. But you do need to tread lightly. The patient needs to know how to use the pen. You do need to measure response. And you also need to measure complications. Is edema worse? Is heart rate higher due to thyroid uh, hormone conversion, stimulating the conversion of T4 to T3 by growth hormone? Is the patient finding themselves too sleepy all day? Or even is the growth hormone too expensive for the patient? So many factors come into play. Yes, growth hormone is very useful for the treatment of congestive heart failure. Yes, I do use it a lot myself, but no cardiologist, no internal medicine doctor, no diagnostician can really prescribe growth hormone to a patient without constant monitoring. You need to know that you can have this patient to follow up with you constantly. You need to know that you can monitor this patient constantly. You need to know that this patient is both uh, willing to work with you and can afford to work with you for the uh, progression of their condition. You want to monitor the progression of their condition with their growth hormone. So the growth hormone dose can be adjusted later, either increased or decreased, depending on how the condition progresses and many, many, many other factors. If you're going to prescribe growth hormone to your heart failure patient, do that, but read the studies. Don't prescribe a dose that's too low and tread lightly. Do it at your own risk. This was Dr. Ali, the Heart Transformation Specialist at the Peptide Science Institute. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, please bless us with a like and a comment. They help the algorithm a lot. And make sure that you know we have a book coming soon called Peptide Salvation, the most comprehensive, most detailed book about peptides ever written, ever in the history of humanity. Goodbye.